Okay, so, so excited to introduce our guest speaker tonight. Um, my name is Sharon Zellen, and I couldn't be more excited to introduce Steve, Stephen Joseph. Steve, how do I pronounce it? Japowski? Japowski, yep. Japowski. I nailed that. Okay, so if you don't know about Steve or Steve's story, I'm just going to tell you that he started two years ago he fast tracked to director in october of 2016 he signed like the very end of july he has earned sixty-eight thousand dollars in his first year with pampered chef and he had a full-time job he's virtual only so far this year he's earned over ninety thousand dollars he was able to quit his full-time job he has an organization of over 250 consultants. He's actually in his first month of qualification for senior executive director. This has all happened in two years of business with a virtual only business and a team that is just about all virtual as well. So we are super excited, Stephen, to have you as our guest speaker and I cannot thank you enough. So, um, Basically, I sent Stephen some questions and he was kind enough to answer them so that we can kind of stay on task. So Steve, the first thing I asked you to do was to share your last year's paycheck for the month of October and this year's paycheck. Because for anyone on this call who's new, who thinks maybe this isn't a real job and would like to see what a real paycheck looks like and ask yourself what you would do with this if this was deposited in your bank account every single month. So let's go last year. Let me share my screen, hold on. Okay, so in October, of last year, my check was $6,611.71. Um, and you can see there, there, there is a, lar a large amount of that, you know, it's overrides, obviously. Um, but then my check, well, it will be for last month, which, you know, it's not final yet, but $12,968.83. For one month, some of you work in a full-time job, Monday through Friday, nine to five, and don't make this. And Steve works from his smartphone or his iPod or his laptop. So when he mentioned overrides, that's what you get for building a team. The Pamper Chef pays you for being a leader. So if you're on this call and you're new, you've probably heard your director say to you, you want to share the business opportunity because you're going to double, triple, and quadruple your income. So that's what an override means. So Steve, thank you for sharing that. And I'll start with the first question. And what I thought you guys would um, appreciate hearing is, what is really your best practice for booking online parties for someone who's just getting started in the virtual world? Sure. So, um, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I love to do these kind of things with just meeting so many new people and just sharing what's working for me. And, and hopefully some of these things you may have already heard before, um, but hopefully you'll take something from this, you know, because we always say somebody might say the same thing to you and then you hear it from a different perspective and it clicks in your brain. So I'm hoping that happens tonight. Um, so when starting out as a new consultant, you want to make sure that you are asking everybody you are Facebook friends with. Initially, people on Facebook, whether, whether you have seen them or talked to them recently, they will just want to support you. So they will likely host one of your first online parties. My first three parties um, were from a girl that I was sat at a table with at a wedding two years prior to starting. I just went out, put it out there and asked her. A girl I hadn't seen in 10 years since I was in a musical with her in high school. I was in Hello Dolly with her. I messaged her and asked her if she'd be willing to do it. And then another person was a neighbor of my sister-in-law's friend's cousin, who I also reached out to and asked if they would just be willing to do one of my first parties for me. Had I not asked them and gone out of my comfort zone, I would never have started and I would not be where I am today. Um, the people that you think will definitely say yes are not going to say yes. 
It's going to be the people that you are, that you prejudge perhaps in your mind, like, oh, Mary, I know her. She's not going to do it. This is not her thing. Or I haven't talked to him in 10 years. There's no way he'd be willing to do that. And those are exactly the people who are going to help you start if you're newer um, with a strong show schedule, because they're going to identify with you having a goal and starting something new, and they're going to want to support you. Okay. Um, you want to go through, if you go onto Facebook, you'll see on the right, there's a, obviously a list of people that have a green dot next to their name. And you've probably heard of this before, but I'm just going to say it again, because it's so important. Um, you want to ask everybody on that green dot list in that moment, when you log on Facebook, they are your first line of quote attack. And when I say attack, I mean, sharing this awesome hosting opportunity. Um, you're going to want to send a personal message to each of them. And you don't want to put a bunch of people in a big group message and send it because that speaks transactional and that's not relationship building. And they're going to see themselves as a transaction to you. And that's not what we want, right? So you're going to want to personally message these people. And this is the language I'll use. So, and all of this language, I sent this to Sharon in a document and I'm totally happy for you to share it with everybody. So they have it. Um, it was, I would say, hi there, I hope you're well. I wanted to reach out to you as I'm casting a wide net among my Facebook friends. I just became a consultant with Pamper Chef and I'm super excited. If you haven't heard, Pamper Chef is a company that sells high quality kitchen products, gadgets, bakeware, cookware, you name it. I have a big goal this month and next month of booking X online parties. And I was wondering if you might be interested in earning some free and discounted product. I have X date and X date open to start online parties. And again, you can tailor this if you want to do cooking shows and or mix or what have you. All you have to do as a host is add people to a group I create and post once a day in the group, posts that I send you, literally five seconds of copying and pasting a day. And most hosts earn over $100 in free product and three half price items from their couch. I hope you will consider supporting my new business. It's scary to start something new, but you never know until you try it. smiley face. Okay, so this is literally the language that I provide to my new consultants when we are doing our first training call. And again, I encourage them to cast a wide net among their Facebook friends and not to prejudge. You always want to give them two dates to start from, in this case of your, well, for online or in home, allowing them to tell you that they will get back to you, as we know, is the kiss of death because they will not. Okay. And even if they say, oh, I can't confirm anything right now, it's just like in an in-home show where you might say, well, can I tentatively schedule you to start on this date? Because then you have a reason that's not a pushy reason to follow up with them to, uh, to confirm the date and maybe in the next three or four days, okay? If you don't have a date, it's not a booking. Um, you want to track your contacts. I am somebody who's very, very much about the numbers. And here's the thing, this business is all about relationships, but when it comes down to it, the, the proof is in the pudding when it comes to the numbers. So I'm very data driven and you want to track your contacts. You can use a spreadsheet or even a good old fashioned notebook, list the date you green dotted X, Y, Z people in whatever your power hour might be for that night to work your business. And then your plan for your follow up. If you do not follow up with them, you are leaving money and bookings right in front of you on the table. I'll give you an example. You might message somebody and they might be in the grocery store with their three triplet newborns and they see your message and all of the kids are like business misbehaving and crying and they see it. Oh, Steve, oh, I remember him from high school. I love paper chef. Oh, I, I would love to do a party, but I just can't respond to him right now in the craziness of what's happening with my life right now in the grocery store. If you don't follow up with them, you will never get that booking because they are not going to remember to follow up with you. And quite frankly, as a consultant, that's our job. That's not their job, right? To get the show. You're going to hear me mention the word system a lot tonight. Systems within our business allows us to work smarter and not harder. And that's really important with what we're trying to accomplish here with our own business, because it frees up more time for us to focus on the areas where we are weak and eventually find those solutions to improve upon those areas of weakness. Okay, next question. Once you book your party, Steve, what are your best practices for host coaching? So host coaching is, is imperative. And for me, it's, it's equally, if not more important for, um, for an online party, you know, uh, than an in-home show per se. Um, 
for sales, of course, but also to obtain future bookings and being able to share the opportunity with enough people. So in other words, you know, the guests actually, or the, the host actually adding enough people. So you have enough people in a pool to be able to share the opportunity with. Successful host coaching helps to ensure the party experience for guests is organized and purposeful. You've probably heard this from home office in that one of the biggest kind of comments in the surveys that they get about virtual parties is that the experience is kind of all over the map. And a big part of that is a lack of intentional, proper, purposeful host coaching. Um, this host coaching will in turn attract guests to want to book with you and or sell our products as, as a consultant. And it also helps to form a relationship with your host. It's very similar to what you would do with an in-home party host. Um, a, lot, a lot of this is all the same, only it's unpacked a different way for online parties versus at home. Um, the goal is to help them understand why you are instructing them to do what they are doing leading up to the party. If they understand the return on investment for them as a host, oh, Steve is having me do X, Y, Z each day or this day or this day, and this is why, they are more likely to do what you tell them. And then they feel that you're invested in this in the success of the party and they're more likely to follow your lead and work for you. And by that, I mean actually engage uh, with party guests, help you secure, secure bookings from their party, which I'll cover in a bit. So for host coaching, it's imperative to have a system, okay? So some of you may have seen the video I did on the Pamper Chef virtual party group page. I'm not sure if you did, but um, it's a shocker, but you've probably heard this hundreds of times, but it's true. I was never a systems person before Pamper Chef. My business has thrived because I devised and implemented systems, those very systems that I um, was resistant toward. Um, whatever that looks for you or what you come up with is fine, but having a system uh, helps you to appear to the host as the authority on how to run the best virtual party and that they should listen to you. So I'm gonna go through my host coaching process uh, in detail right now. My host coaching begins when I book the party, okay? When you book a show, I will tell, when I book a show, I'll tell the host that I'll be adding them to a few of my past shows, a very good one and a very bad one that didn't earn any host benefits for the host, okay? You wanna do this immediately and then you, I tell them which show was, was good at, you know, whatever the sales were, $1,000, and I ask them to scroll through the party and let me know why they think it went well. And you'll hear things from the host like, the host seems to have hosted daily, they tag their friend, uh, guests in the daily games, they tag different friends and products that they thought they would like and why, and then I'll ask them to scroll through the bad show that didn't earn anything and doesn't have any members, and I ask them why they thought that turned out that it did. And they'll say, well, it's the total opposite of the other show that did well. There's no engagement. The host isn't doing anything. Um, you know, and then I ask that upcoming host, which host do you want to be? Do you want to be the one that earned $300 in free product, five half price items, and 60% off a quick cooker? Or do you want to be the host that signed up to earn something and earn nothing? Okay, so what that does is you're subliminally setting the bar for what they need to do to have a great party with you so that every time you touch base with them, leading up to the party actually starting, they will remember the things that you told them they needed to do to make sure they have a good show. Okay? My process begins on Tuesday before the week of the party. Uh, my parties begin on Fridays and they run seven days until the following Thursday. The first two days are pre-party, so it's all engagement. Um, you have $20 and six people to feed. What do you make sound up for a ticket to the pre-party prize? Uh, share the recipe, you get five tickets, right? It's all about creating that engagement and excitement like they are at an in-home show with you, okay? There's a misconception that you can't create that buzz in an online party because everybody's behind a computer screen or a phone, but that's absolutely untrue, okay? Uh, and then the remaining five days of my party are themed days. So one day, uh, the first day is... Uh, gadgets. The second day is what's new at Pamper Chef. The third day is uh, bakeware. The fourth day is stoneware. And the last day is my favorite things. So what that does is we get the engagement going, right? Where, where everybody's excited and having fun. Then I get to the meat and potatoes of the party, which is the product. And then I end it by with, with the closure that, hey, you've been dealing with a real person all week who actually uses these products. And here's how what I use them for. 
so that then they have an authentic, there's an authenticity to their experience with me that then compels them to want to book, sell, or be a long-term customer of mine that I hope will eventually book or join my team. Okay, so the process begins um, on Tuesday. And once, once you set up everything, the party on the back end, and I set it up on Facebook in, in groups, and some of you may do events. Um, I know a lot of people are doing groups now because of the third party posting system. Um, the debacle, but what I will send my hosts um, personally, private group message, uh, message with me is, hey there, I'm so excited for your Pamper Chef party to begin this week. I've created your Facebook group and added you, so look for a notification from me and click OK at the top to join. Now it's time to add your friends. You want to add at least 150 people from your friends list because then usually 75 to 100 will decide to become a member of the party and click OK to see the posts. And then 12 to 13 will order, giving you great party sales and host benefits. Don't prejudge, everybody eats. And the beauty of a Facebook party is that it really isn't awkward adding people you haven't seen for a while or talked to. Note that my hosts who do not add 150 people usually do not have successful parties. Follow my lead, let's not have that be you, smiley face. You can get away with a lot of tough love with a big old smiley face after whatever you say, okay? And then I say, make sure to add 20 at a time so Facebook doesn't mark you as a spammer. Adding friends to a group is tricky as they have to click okay to be added officially. It sometimes takes people you might add a while to see the notifications and then click okay. So they will still appear as a friend you can add to the group even after you just added them. It will all work out. Just scroll all the way down to the end of your friends list and add some more people from the latter part of the alphabet and go back and forth. If you can't find the group, actually click into your groups from the Facebook homepage on the left under explore. Scroll and you should see it at the bottom and you can approve to be added. Trust me, I have tasks each day to make sure this party rocks. So these, this is what I call the, the, the logistics of the host coaching because I'm telling them to do X, Y, and Z and I'm telling them why to do X, Y, and Z, okay? Um, and then on, so, that, so that's Tuesday. That's all I do Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, um, on Wednesday, the week of the party, uh, I will Facebook message each host individually again. I'll say, I'm so excited for the pre-party fun to start in just a few days. Please post this text and link to your group together on your personal wall. Um, it will help to capture some additional people who may have missed your ad notification and remind them you're having an online Pamper Chef party. So the problem with Facebook now is before the permissions used to be willy nilly, anybody can see and look and click and whatever, anything. And now it's the complete opposite. So unless people get permission to unlock certain restrictions and settings, they are not going to see notifications, they're not going to see ads, et cetera. Okay, so it's our job as consultants to co overcompensate and try to find every single possible avenue through which we can get the results that we want. Um, so I, then I send them this. Um, this is what they're supposed to post on their personal wall. Hey there, uh, hey all, I'm so excited to be hosting an online Pamper Chef party right here on Facebook starting Friday. You can play games to win prizes and shop for awesome kitchen gadgets from your couch. My consultant's really fun. I've added many of you to my party group, but if you are not added and want to party with us, just click the link to my group below and request to be added. It's that simple. Facebook is always making changes, so some people get notifications about being added to the group and some do not. Go to your Facebook homepage, look to the left under explore, click on groups, and then scroll down to find my group for the party and approve it to be added. So make sure though, if you decide to use this system, that you note how many members are in the group just from um, them adding people because, there, and there's a reason for this. So then in the evening on Wednesday, same day, I'll say, hey there, I just wanted to let you know that from just posting what you did earlier today, your party members went from XX up to XX. That's however many more from just a simple post. Would you be willing to post the same language and a link to the group tonight? Your friends log into social media at all different times during the day, so there's a good chance we will capture even more people that want to party with us by posting it not only in the morning, but also at night too. This is the last post on your personal wall, I promise. Smiley face. Okay? When they say yes, then you send them the exact same language again with the link to their group so that they can post on their personal wall again. Because again, if somebody has a bunch of posts on their uh, notification feed during the day and they don't check Facebook till like 8 p.m., they're not going to scroll back to see what they missed from you because they're going to have no idea that, you're, that the post is having a party. So you, again, you have to direct them on exactly what to do and why you're doing it. 
And then the, on Thursday, the week of the party, um, again, individual messages to your host, however many you have in a given week. I say, hey there, so I have a challenge for you. We need to get the number of members in the party group up. And this is, if there's 100 members or if there's 50, doesn't matter. I will, I will still put this challenge out there. And I would say, uh, Facebook and its rules are constantly changing. So again, I'm explaining why I'm having them do these things. Sometimes people don't see or get notifications and this can hurt the success of your online party. If I give you the language to copy and paste, would you be willing to personally message 20 to 25 people from the group you added that you think would be actually be interested in the party? It's just copying and pasting. You don't have to, of course, but it's a surefire way to capture people who actually wanna be a part of it. And the language is very non-confrontational, okay? If they say yes, then I would say, great, here's the language you can use, remember personal messages. Hi, I just wanted to reach out and let you know that I'm hosting an online Pampered Chef party that starts tomorrow on Facebook. I added you to the group, but you may have missed the ad due to Facebook always changing. Again, explaining. Just go to Facebook on the homepage under Explore on the left, click Groups, scroll down, you'll see my party, click into it and click OK to be a member if you want to participate. My consultant is awesome and there will be some freebies. Who doesn't love free smiley face? Now, just like anything with the business, right? If you offer the opportunity, to be a consultant and they turn you down, they're much more likely to say yes to the lesser of that, which is booking a party. So in this case, if they don't want to send the messages because they don't want to be that, they don't want to bug their friends as they will say to me, I will say, no worries, I understand. Would you at least be willing to tag 15 to 20 friends in one of the posts you did yesterday about the party who you are pretty confident would want to be a part of it? Good friends, foodies, people you know with disposable income and especially paper chef junkies like you. Folks are often busy and overlook notifications, but probably will want to be a part of your party. Are you willing to tag them? It takes a few seconds. I've never had anybody not be willing to do that, the lesser of the two, okay? Uh, and then Friday, the week of the party, um, in the morning, I will put all my hosts into a group message, and then I will send them, good morning all, you all begin hosting online parties with me today. This is a group message where I will post your daily host posts for you to copy and paste picture with the text into your group not on your personal wall. It's very important you do this daily post and in the morning as it will show your guests you are engaged, even though you are just copying and pasting. Also to ensure your guests are taking advantage of the chances to win games for raffle tickets and prizes, make sure to tag them in the, uh, in the comments in the daily game. And then of course I plant the seed about joining my team. Um, lastly, pay, pay close attention to how little I do while running your party. You can do this too and earn the commission and free product from your couch. Let me know if you decide that's something you're interested in and want to flip it to make it your launch party. Okay. Then I say, here's today's post. Make sure to post picture and text together on your group wall. If you are confused about what this means, please let me know before doing it. Because, you know, everybody has a different level of technical savvy, right? So one thing I also encourage you to do the day the online party is slated to begin individually with your host is to send either a video via messenger or a, a voice clip individually. Now, if anybody knows me, I am not a morning person, so I'm not gonna come at you with the way I look in the morning at like nine o'clock, it's not gonna happen. So I will send a voice clip and I call it my pump up message. So in the clip, I tell my host how excited I am about that, uh, that they're hosting a party with me and that we are in this together. And then I remind them of some of the things they want to make sure they do. I ask them, remember those two parties that I added you to back when we booked you? Which host do you want to be again? Do you want to be the one that earned a lot or the one that earned nothing? And they say, oh, definitely the one that you know, earned something. And I would say, all right, well, just a reminder, you want to make sure to do these X, Y, Z things in order to accomplish that and make that happen. Are you with me? And then I, they will send it back to me, you know, usually it's text back to me saying yes. Um, it's just a great way to remind them of what they need to do to be the best host. So, and then all it is is, you know, I will send them a daily host post that is always a call to action. So it might be, uh, what's your biggest kitchen headache? Mine is X, Y, Z, sound off for a ticket to the grand prize. Um, I'm so excited you're all here. Welcome to the party. Share how you know me by um, sharing a memory we have or an inside joke. Pictures and jokes are, or pictures are encouraged. Okay, you know, sound off for a ticket to the grand prize. Um, one of them is always about the business opportunity, which I'll talk about later, but I have one of the host posts is saying, I bet you can tell Steve loves what he does. Um, here are a list of questions you can ask him, nothing's off limits, check out those kits. Uh, sound, you know, sound off with a question for 10 tickets to the grand prize. Okay, so that's, that's it for host coaching, for me at least. And again, all of this I will sh share and has to share with you. Quick questions. 
there's an echo. Do you have a microphone issue? Is it you're in a kitchen? What do you think? Well, I'm in a kitchen, but I also live in the city, so there's constantly like sirens and you have to go through my where I live to get to the bad part. So <laughs> it could be that it could be that. All right, there's a little echoing. Okay. So what is your best practice for booking parties from your parties? Okay, so um this may be outside of your comfort zone. This is just one thing, but I'll, I'll get into the the, the real uh, the real main thing I do that has that that has allowed me to have forty parties in November. Okay, so um, look for the rock star party guest in your online parties. These are people who are engaged and commenting on everything, sharing information about products they love, and commenting on other guest comments. These are hot leads not only for future hosts but also for. Um, for recruit leads, uh, take, I'm going to show you a snip of this here. Hold on one second. Okay. So here's a game. Let me try to blow, try to blow it up a little bit. All right, so here's a game that I did, okay? Just, you know, a daily game. And then, you know, guess how many, whatever, in the Waffle Stick fan. And then I, you know, there's this person here, this, her name is Jessica, and she's literally been commenting on everything. Like, yes, everybody plays the games, but she's been commenting on every single post, okay? So I'm like, all right, Jessica, check your message request folder in your inbox for a fun message from me. So I'm telling her where to find it because we're not friends, so otherwise it goes to that special abyss folder where nobody can find anything. And then I messaged her, she liked it. Okay, so I knew that she was on the lookout for it. And then I said, hey, Jessica, it's the Pamper Chef guy. She said, hi, Steven. I said, I just wanted to reach out first to say thank you for your order. I hope you're enjoying the party. She said, you're welcome. The party's been great so far, very engaging. I sent a picture of a little toaster, piece of toast, smiley face, okay? And then I said, I also wanted to thank you for being what I like to call a rock star party guest. You are commenting on everything and super engaged with only spurs others to want to participate too. I had a question. I normally always message my rock star party guests because they are usually people I would love to work with as a host of their own online paper chef party. I'm sure you probably have tons more on your wish list, and I can help you earn that for free if you host your own party in December. 86% of people will be shopping online for gifts and items would arrive before Christmas. Not to mention I do all the work. I would love to facilitate a party for you. Her response was, I'm leaning towards yes, but let me think on it for just a few hours. And I said, did I mention Gina will also get any one item or set uh, free offer wish list for you booking also smiley face. It's literally a win-win for everyone. She said, okay, sign me up. It doesn't take much to twist my, she meant arm. I'm a big uh, supporter of small businesses. And I said, wahoo, I have a December fifth start date. I'll need your information and yay. Okay. So let me unshare. Now. Okay. So the reason I share that with you is because I, with my business, I'm trying new things all the time. Okay. If you don't try these kind of things, you will never, not, she could she could book with me anyway, right? She might have, but this is a personal way that I was able to connect with her to ensure that she got on my schedule. Now, will it always work? No, but if you don't do it, you'll never know what the return on investment will be. And again, you know, stuff like this, if I have an idea and I try it and it doesn't work, I don't do it anymore. That's the definition of insanity. If you try, if I try something and it works, I say, okay, how can I scale this or maximize this or do this differently for another aspect of my business? This is booking. Could I do something like this for selling or for uh, recruiting? Right. It's, it's that kind of mindset you have to have when you're, when you're going into trying something new like this with your process, whatever that may be. Okay. So the main way I book parties, this is called the host booking challenge. I'm sure people have been doing it before I came along and started doing it, and it's not a good name for the 40, okay? Not creative, not exciting, but it is what it is. So challenges can be scary for some and exciting for others, right? But either way, people are flattered when someone believes in them enough to present a challenge. They are just tickled, okay? So eventually, you want to get to a point where you are having your host book your parties for you. On the first day of the actual party, which is product showcasing for me, I reach out to my host for that week with the following language. So I have a challenge for you. I hope you will accept. I always challenge my host to help me get bookings. And if you can help me get three, I will add a free gift to your order when you place it in your party 
and you will get a half price item at all of their parties when they qualify. Basically, I send you the language and you message people you think would be great hosts like you and might want to earn free product. You do a group message with each with me, you, and them. You send the message and I will take it from there. Pick five people you think would be great hosts. That way we will likely secure three. I have five people in mind. What do you think? And those five people I have in mind are all around the United States. So that I am having a different pot of people, of their friends from all across the US to be able to expand my circle and grow my business versus being stuck in the same pot, okay? And then, I, and of course, you tell them why you think those five people would be great. Well, Maria, she ordered $75 worth. Obviously, she's invested. And, you know, she seems like, you know, she was super engaging and fun. And she, you know, she seems to love bakeware. So that would be kind of a great angle we could, we could take with her party. So I give reasons for why I pick these five people. And as we know with anything, people are ra ra would rather be spoon fed what to do than have to think and do it themselves. So if I tell them five names, those are usually the five names they're picking. Also, I will, this is, well, this is just how I, how I am. I'm very, I'm very blunt about how, how I do these things, but I will go to their Facebook pages and I'll look and see what they do as their profession, if it's listed. And if they're a lawyer, you better believe that's one of my five. So I'm very strategic and you should be too about how you go about filling your calendar to make sure that you know you are getting the most ROI as well in addition to the hosts, okay? Um, and then if they say yes, and I've only ever had four people in two years and four months say no to doing this, okay? I just wanted to send you, and I send this as language to use. Hi, I just wanted to send you a quick message and say thanks so much for going or for being a part of my online Pamper Chef party. I really wanted to host a party online because I love their products. I wanted to get some for free, but I didn't want to clean my house or vacuum. Doing one online has been super easy. It was a win-win. The consultant I'm working with, Steve, has made it really seamless, and he's great with his customers. I thought you would be perfect to host an online party yourself if you wanted to earn some free goodies as well. Now, sometimes you'll get a host who, like, is amazing and will customize it and be like, hey, Marie, it was so fun to see you at so-and-so's baseball game last week. I just wanted to say thank you so much. And that's, like, the icing on the, on the top, right? But that doesn't always happen. But anyway, this language such, uh, touches on the main things we want to get across for them to hopefully book a show. Um, once the host sees the message individually, um, once you see that they see it, that's when I go in for the kill with like a green dot message style kind of message where I say, hey there, um, you know, the host name told me you'd be great. You'd be great host for an online party. It's super easy. You just need to add Facebook friends to a group I create. Uh, and post once a day, post I send you, literally five to six seconds of your time copying and pasting a day and you'll make out like a bandit. Most of my hosts earn uh, over $100 in free products and three half price items and never leave home. I have X date and X date to start, again, because a booking is not a booking without a date. What do you think? Smiley face. Now, sometimes they will see the message and not respond. Just like with green dotting, if you don't follow up with them, you are leaving money and bookings on the table. Because they may be taking Johnny to his lacrosse practice, or they may be at the grocery store, and they may see it and say, oh, I would love to do a party, but I just can't respond right now. They are not going to remember to respond. You have to be in charge. You have to be in control. Okay? Um, why does this work, right? This, the potential host has some sort of connection with the current host that is a greater impetus for them to decide to book versus just doing so off of a random post of mine in the party. Now, am I working hard to, to create relationships with people? Of course I am, but they, they don't know me from the cable guy. So I really have a lot of work to do in general, but they do have some sort of strong or weak connection to the host. So them suggesting this potential person to do a party, it just makes them feel special. Like, wow, I haven't talked to so-and-so in however long and they think I'd be like a great host like them. Oh, maybe I should think about it. It's just the idea of a mindset, whereas it's different than me posting in the party, oh, you can get this 60% off, you know, in blah, 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 month, you know, comment if you're interested. There's no real, they're not inspired necessarily to, to book based on that, whereas they, there is more buy-in and investment when you do it, something like this. Um, so that's, that's how I book my shows. I love that, Steve. On the long, along those lines, how do you offer the business opportunity to your guests? Sure. So 
Obviously, I have um, so sometimes from that rock star party guest conversation, I will turn it into a recruiting chat. It just depends on the way that I feel the, the dance of the conversation is going when we are talking. And you, and you, you just need to feel that out and, and kind of best ascertain where you, you know how far you can go with pushing for for that so soon in your engagement with that person um but in my parties you'll see a few business posts um one of them is on the first day of the party there's another one later on um, where i show off my paycheck uh, well i don't show off my paycheck i basically show a picture of my paycheck with the amount blued out and i do a game where they can win a free prize if they participate and guess like, whoever wins the closest to what my paycheck is for that month and then I will post the actual picture of the paycheck the next day and then announce who the winner is. And people's minds, and here's the thing, you saw my paycheck, great. Your paycheck, whatever that might be, 200, 400, 600, $1,000, that is 200, 400, 600, 1000 dollars more than they have now. So anything that they see, doesn't matter what amount it is, that is a powerful thing to see that they're, again, as Sharon said in the beginning, making real money doing this wherever, whether it's in home or virtually. Okay. So, um, so on posts like that, I will always, the, both the business posts that I do, the host uh, will do a post that um, talks about, you know, like I said, ask Steve anything, you get 10 tickets. I message every single person that comments on any of those things. And here's where you have to be a little fearless, right? Because sometimes it's, you know, like it's sometimes it's scary, right? Like you don't, you, you don't want to be rejected. I get it. You don't want to put yourself out there and maybe you don't know how to answer every specific question if you're newer. And I, honestly, I still don't know what I'm doing and it's two years and four months later. I just go with the flow. Okay. You have to get over the idea that you need to know everything about the opportunity about the business about what they're going to get out of it and you just have to be willing to ask them if they want to learn more so what i will do if somebody comments on a business post i'll, I'll say they might say you know is there a certain sales requirement every month and i'll respond um hey sue hey at sue i'll tag her and i'll say you know um you you, you only need to sell 150 dollars a month to uh, retain your consultant discount which is 20 percent on long-standing products 50 percent on um, anything any one item that's new that comes out um and you only have to um you only have to sell 150 every six months um before you would lose your consultant discount but i find that most people don't ever have that problem because, because they end up having such a great time can i or i will be messaging you I'm sending you a fun message. Look for it in your message request folder in your inbox. Okay. Now, are you always going to connect with every single person that you said you, you reply to? No, but your pool is greater. If you cast a wider net, just like with anything in this business, you know, like if you're fishing, right? If you cast several lines, you're going to get more bites versus if you cast one. So what will happen is, when somebody, um, what I'll do is when I message them, I'll say, you know, hey, Sharon, uh, I, uh, thanks so much for playing my game. It's the Pamper Jeff guy. I just want to check in, like, did you actually want to learn more or did you just want the tickets? Because there's no shame in that game if you just want tickets. Okay. Then they might say, oh, well, I really just want the tickets. And I'd be like, okay, well, that's, that's fine. No worries. You get 10 tickets. Would you be willing to look, hear a little bit more about what I do? And I would say 90% of the time they're willing to hear more. And I can't tell you the number of people that I flipped from the, wanting the tickets to wanting what I have just from that conversation. And the conversation goes like this. So when I started my upline, Stacey Itzel, I'm sure you guys have heard of her. She's amazing. She, when we first had our first chats with potential leads, she was, I was word vomiting about the opportunity. I was so excited. I couldn't keep it in. I would say, I would put the whole kitchen sink out there in the message. And she's like, whoa, on the aside, hold up, you're way too intense. You gotta dial it back. You know, you gotta, you wanna let them do the talking in these conversations once you take them from the mess of uh, a post in the party to private a message. So I will normally ask oh, very open-ended questions. I'll say, uh, after the whole part about, you know, are you willing to learn more? I would say, um, so what are you like, what are you enjoying most about the party? And then they might share with me, oh, well, I love the games. I love that there's so many chances for people to win prizes. And I was like, yeah, that's really important to me, my parties. I want to make sure that, you know, everybody really has fun. I was like, it's the same thing with my team. You know, there's no pressure. It's all about just like, you know, we all are in this for whatever we want to get out of it. And it's all about fun for us. All right. So I'm planting that seed about what it's like to be on our team. 
Then I would say, so, you know, how do you know the host? Then she might say, oh, well, we work together. We work at, um, at the Department of Defense or whatever. And so for me, what that does in my brain is that says, okay, so she works at the, the day, work at the Department of Defense, and maybe she, she or he says, I work, you know, 65, 70 hours a week. Chances are they probably don't need the money. Right. But what my brain does there is my brain says, where do I want to take this conversation so that I'm giving of myself of the opportunity to show them how it can fit into whatever life they have going on and all of their um, obligations and responsibilities. So that's where I might say, oh, gosh, I was like, that, that sounds like you're, you have a crazy, hectic week at work. Uh, I was like, we have so many people on our team who have really demanding jobs, and they just do this for the fun and the camaraderie and the friendships they make. And, yeah, the extra money is great, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really all about, you know, it's just kind of a, a breather for doing something other than your really intense, demanding job. So that takes it one direction, right? Now, somebody might say, oh, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I, work for, I know the host because te we teach together at the same school. Well, we all know that teachers are severely underpaid. My sister is a teacher, okay? So what I would say is, you know, then I would lead with the idea of the money. I would say, well, you know, up until recently, I work full time just like you. And I, I, I you know, I, I have more month than money for sure. So, you know, if, you know, most of my consultants all have full time jobs and they're clearing about four to five hundred dollars a month from their couch. And we use a posting system so you can actually be running your business while you're at school teaching and changing all those lives you're changing at school. With that, what would you do with an extra four to five hundred dollars? OK, then it might be somebody says, oh, well, I, uh, you know, she lives in the same cul-de-sac as me. You know, I, I'm a stay at home mom. I used to work, but we, you know, we have four kids and, you know, we, I homeschool them. And so and what that says to me is this person would like to contribute to the household income, but they can't necessarily because of their responsibilities with their little ones. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the flexibility of a paper chip business and how easy it can fit into their lifestyle and how we have many, you know, it's the whole idea of feel, felt, found. I, I feel, you know, I feel what you're, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I've been there, you know, but we have many other people just like you that do what you, you know, we do and do it and weave it into their life seamlessly. So it's kind of the idea of, it's a little mixture of like overcoming objections with a side of giving of yourself. Because one of the biggest mistakes we can make as uh, if we'd want to recruit, right, is, you know, like I know for me, I set a goal every month, I want five team members. Five new team members, okay? But if I go into those conversations with the idea of taking, a taking mentality, people will smell that a mile away and they won't want anything to do with me. People are very intuitive in that way. So when I go into the conversation, I'm always thinking about, I mean, yes, do we all want two plus recruits a month? Of course we do. But I go into it thinking, how best can this opportunity be of service to this individual? And it's my job to learn that in that conversation and unpack it in a way that the person then convinces themselves that this can be a perfect fit for them. Okay? Amen. Um, Are you done with the opportunity to the guests? Yep. Okay, so the next question is, tell me about how you present the opportunity to your host, Steve. Sure. So um, obviously you, you probably know that you know this. The ho your host is your best rec recruit lead, right? Um, repetition is key. You want to mention the business opportunity at least three times directly to them during the party and twice you'll do it indirectly. And I'll talk about what that means. But you want to make it a point to mention the credit options and benefits of being on your team when they book. So I would say, you know, once I, once I, um, I send them that information on the, the first day, you know, where we're talking about, uh, I send them the voice clip where I say, we're so excited. You know, I'm so excited to do this, be doing this with you. Well, let's get you a lot of free stuff. Um, I would say also, I encourage you to watch uh, what I do, or, or should I say how little I do in running this group, uh, this party for you. In case you decide you might want to sign up and join my team as an online only consultant when your party closes. Um, almost my entire team does online parties and it has to be easy for them to do it because so many of them have other obligations like full-time jobs, a handful of kids, um, or just other responsibilities that you require a lot of their time. And then I do hashtag just something to think about. So there I'm planting the seed for them, again, subliminally to be thinking about that's an option for them. Because sometimes, right, they might not even, that might not even be on their radar. Yeah, they know I'm a consultant, but it's just like with, with um, remember with Doris when she had her first person that came to her and asked her if they could do what she did? 
right? They didn't know that at that moment because it was, you know, it just was foreign to them. So we, as the consultants, we have to be the stewards of our business to let people know that the opportunity is an option for them, not just hosting. Okay. Um, so that's the first time. I also remind them about midway through the party, I would say just to them privately, wow, you already have party sales of say $400 and have earned X amount in free product. This is pretty average for my shows. Did you know that as a consultant on my team, you would make X amount of money off a show like that? And you will have never have left your house. What are your thoughts on flipping this party to be your launch party and you sign up as a consultant? If you're thinking you might all be interested, why, um, why should I make the commission when you could be? Hashtag something to think about. Okay, I'm not pressuring them. I'm merely informing and inviting them. Which we. I love, I love that hashtag. Something to think about. Yeah, it's just so it's because because again I say it again at, at this next. I'm going to mention this next part, and it's a repetition, right? The threes idea. Then it starts to stick, and then they can't forget about it. It's on the forefront of their mind, right? So then the last time when the show's about to close, I say. Uh, don't forget about the kit credit while you're shopping. I know you probably didn't think that you'd be shopping for your own business by the end of this, but as you saw, it's super easy. Give it a shot. If it doesn't work for you, you get to keep all the Pamper Chef kit goodies. You're just dating me for 30 days. You're not signing the title and tax to be with me forever. Okay, now you can say, well, you can twist it however you want based on your personality, but that's how I saw it. Uh, and then I say hashtag, just something to think about. Again. Um... Oh, the two indirect times that they'll they'll be they'll have it on their mind again. The first is when um, I will post it on the first day about ask me a question about my business. When you sell twelve fifty in your first thirty days, here's the signing incentive, and then I will tag the host in the comments and say, Sharon, kick it off, ask me a question. Right, and then so then she whoever the host is, she has to fit, has to then think about okay, well. She's a consultant, like, what, what would I want to know if I thought about doing this? So then they kick it off, right? But really, it's, again, something to think about because they are thinking about it because they have to ask the question, okay? Then another time that I have that, that is indirectly is when they are, um, when I'm not actually talking to them about it, is when I'm sending them their daily host post, which is towards the mm, fourth or fifth day, where they post, I bet you can tell Steve loves... What he does as a consultant, ask him, you know, for you know, ask him for ten tickets to whatever. That's just indirectly. It's another kind of hit point in their in their mind for them to realize that that's the an op option is the opportunity. So that's that's it for that. I love that. Steve, do you go live in your shows every day? Um, so people are surprised when I say this, but I don't really. I go live if a party is struggling and it needs a little extra TLC. Um, I do include many videos in my parties that are tied with certain products. So like for me, the closing cut is just really hard to wrap your head around by looking at a picture of it. You need to actually see it being used, what it can be used for. So, you know, I have a lot of home office videos and things like that that I use. However, I have, um, recently I have hired someone to do videos of me using the products in my own kitchen. Um, so that I can have actual, just because I feel like, I have had enough, and I'll get to this too, but I've had enough customers say like, we would have loved to see you using some things. Um, and so obviously the customer is always right. So I'm going to go ahead and take that into um, account. One way that I actually found that out is because I do these things at the end of my parties called focus groups. And this wasn't in what I shared you, Sharon, but I, sh I want to share this because it's important. Um, back when I started my business, everybody was having thousand dollar parties. I was seeing in all those different pages. And I was like, I think what I have is good. I think the content's good. I think, you know, I think I'm, I'm you know, I'm selling my butt off and people are, are interested to be interested in what I'm offering and putting out there. Uh, but then I, but I was only hitting like 700 in my, in my parties. And I was like, well, obviously I need to look within and see what I'm not doing. Right. So I decided to get feedback from people. And this is actually where the whole idea of the, doing the live video or doing the videos of myself came in just recently was that I, I do focus groups where I put, I pick five people, uh, three, two or three people that spent a good amount in the party because they're obviously invested in the product and they like what we have as a, you know, as a brand. And then two or three people that have agreed to host. Cause you know, again, I like to host, try to give me three parties. Do they always know, but usually I get two from every party. So I put them in a group message and I tell them if they're willing to participate and answer some questions for me, 
they'll be entered to win a free gift. And to them, they see that they have a solid 20% chance of winning that because there's only five of them. I don't tell them what it is. When they find out it's corn butter, they lose their minds. They're so excited, okay? So, um, and I ask them questions like, what did you love about the party? What annoyed you about the party? What did you see? Uh, to, you know, what, what did you not see that you would have liked to see more of? Um, what, uh, how does this compare to other direct sales parties that you've either been a guest in or a host for? And um, have I showed you enough about the business opportunity? And I will tell you when I did this, my mind was blown. Okay, because what I, so, and I, you'll probably hear, this is probably a no-no, but I'm just going to be honest. I used to have a power tool day where I showed off all the expensive stuff, like rock crocs and cookware and all that stuff. What overwhelmingly, what my guests told me was that there is no way they could make the case to their partner or husband to drop $150 or more in an online party on one thing. However, they said, I could go to that person and say, oh yeah, I spent $150, but I got 15 things. Okay, so I completely got rid of Power Tool Day. I, I occasionally, like with the new product day, I'll show off a couple of the pants and stuff, but I don't do that because they, they told me that, they, 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 they said, you made it very clear we can host to get things that are more expensive at a discount or free. So why not take the, that extra day that was for power tools to use on other things, gadgets, things that are a little less expensive that we can justify to whoever or ourselves to spend the money. Yeah, and so, and, then, and what I said to myself is, okay, the, the, main, uh, the main kind of idea is that this is what we do, right? You show off the power tools. So I said, I'm going to not do it for a while. I'm going to see what the ROI is, what the return on investment, and if it works, then I'll, I'll maximize it on the success of it. If it doesn't work and people are clamoring for power tools, I'll put them back in. But you'll never know until you try and, t you know, and try something else and see if it sticks and works. And clearly it works. It works. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I got uh, people. I mean, people say this, and it's like funny. I'm not a magical unicorn. I, I literally just try different things, and if it works, then I keep doing it, and if it doesn't, I throw it away. Well, you're I, encourage, I encourage you all to do that too. I love that. So let me ask you the last question: What is your best advice that you would give to someone that's listening to this call right now that really wants to get their business to the next level and start earning an income like you currently are? What would be your best advice? Um, so I would suggest two things. First, you, you should commit to stretching yourself, whether you are a consult consultant or a director or otherwise. If you want to achieve more than what you currently are now, you have to set the bar and go there. If you are a director now and want to be an advanced director, commit to doubling your show schedule. This will put you in front of more people th than you are now to hopefully find that next rock star that's hungry for what you are hungry for. Um, and as your team grows, uh, as you grow your teams, leading by example is really important. So this is why I personally commit, as I mentioned before, to recruiting five people a month and personally selling $13,000 or more. Now that's me, okay? That doesn't, have, that doesn't mean it has to be you, but what I find for me and my team members is that it inspires them that there's more they can achieve with their business than they already are. Um, if you want your team members to perform, whether it's large or small, the directive needs to come from the top, right? And the top means if you're a new consultant and you sign the one person in your first two weeks, or if you're an executive, or if you're an advanced director, it doesn't matter, right? You have to set the example because how can you ask others to book, sell, and recruit if you're working to minimums? That's the first thing, okay? Secondly, once you have the stronger personal show schedule and have a recruiting goal that you are focused on, you want to work to identify aspiring leaders. This was huge for us in the promotions that we've had and so quickly. Um, on the very first call with a new consultant during their onboarding process, you know, where we're getting them all set up and familiar and figuring out their goals, we discuss their why for signing up and their dream monthly income goal, right? I tell them to shoot for the moon because if they shoot for the moon, they'll at least hit the stars. Shoot for the stars, they'll hit a cloud. Shoot for a cloud, they'll hit a tree, tree, dirt. Okay, so I say go big 
because you're only going to be closer to whatever you want to get sooner if you go big and you're not afraid to do it, right? So if they have a strong income goal that shakes out in terms of commission to be selling over that 1250 in their first month, which we know is that kind of golden number for, um, you know, qualifying and earning you know, the selling incentive, then that's great, right? But as we know, most people, unless they are pushed, will lowball themselves because they don't want to fail. Okay, so um, we as leaders should not work to minimum. So why would I allow new consultants to work to minimums right out of the gate? Okay, sometimes they just need to feel that you believe in them enough to tell them that you think that they should stretch themselves a little more. So um, I encourage them to stretch themselves in their first month with Pamper Chef. I challenge them to commit to hitting at least that 1250 in their first 30 days. Then that way they'll earn 300 in commission, 100 in pampered chef bucks, and then whatever the signing incentive is. And those are real tangible wins for my new consultants, um, accompanied with the, my belief in them that achieving this is possible, that, that incites them to move forward, right? My new consultants are typically qualifying in two weeks, okay? So moving onward with that, by the end of the month, their first month, they have 2,000 or more in sales in. And so then they, are totally empowered and they come to me and they ask me what is next? What, and what's the next thing they can achieve? And that's when I break down the idea of promoting and how it really is a balance between selling and recruiting. And I tell them, you know, um, you're already halfway there. You already are working. You have, you performed well this month. We've purposely set your schedule up to be just like this month, next month. So why not start welcoming new team members? And then I tell them about the fast track to director program. You know, it's our job. I've always said this, but our job is leaders that all new consultants look for success. And that's really our responsibility. And it's the greatest gift that we can give a new consultant. You know, just telling them to do whatever they want, they don't know they're brand new. Everyone joins, most people, I should say, join to make additional income. And by not showing them the way and leading the way, we're really doing them a disservice. So I love that you right out of the gate. And I try to do the same thing for you, show people the potential and what they can earn right out of the gate. Okay, so it's late, and I know you guys probably have questions. So, Steve, if you could stick around for five more minutes. If you're we'll on. Do. We, we, can do, we can do 10. We can do 10. <laughs> He's so good. He doesn't have a full-time job to get up four in the morning. I love it. This is this is my prime time. Like I live for the night. So like I sleep until 1030. I can't do that morning mess. But nighttime, you can I can do whatever. All right. So guys, if you're on mute, bottom left, you can unclick the mute button. And if you have any question for Steve, don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. As you heard, he started two years ago. Even if you're a new consultant, he understands, no question is silly, even if you're a season consultant. Who's got a question? I do. Um, are you mailing the uh, catalogs to the host or is everything just online? So this is another probably Pamper Chef no-no, but I'll just keep it real. Uh, I, do ask the, I do ask them if they would like some catalogs because I do tell them that you do want to collect a few outside orders from people that don't have Facebook. But, and then, so I tell them, you know, I ask them, would you like me to send you some catalogs, but I don't send a host, big old host packet, because again, typically I, I will ask them, I will say, you know, would you like some catalogs? I'll say, would you like a host packet? And they'll say, can't we do everything on messenger? And I'm like, yes. So they're booking an online party because they don't want all that stuff. They want the ease of it. They want the kind of, you know, just, just, just the, um, you know, the, 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 the casual aspect of it. They don't want it to feel so formal and buttoned up, at least in my experience. Yeah. I love, I love that you're asking. You're being honest and upfront. If I send yeah. you catalogs, would you use them? Some people right out of the gate will say, no, honestly, I work at home. There's no one I'm going to show them to or whatever. Great question. Anyone else have a question for Steve? Me. Hello, Tina. Hey. Steve, I have a couple of questions. I'm gonna get them all out really quick. Are you manually posting or do you use a party service? 
So uh, my whole my team uses uh, the posting service. I am addicted to the manual posting, so I still manually post. I did it when I had a full time job for a while. I had a po- I used the posting service, but then when all the changes with Facebook happened and we had to, I found that I have never had more consistent sales across parties since I started manually posting again. And how many times a day are you posting? So I post, and you're going to think this is crazy, but I can explain how that's not crazy. So I post 16 times a day, which is probably another pamphlet I've done, but just keeping it real. Four times at eight in the morning, well, four times in the morning whenever I get up. Again, it's my business, so it could be 10. Four at two, depends on when I get up, could be 12. Uh, four at like five o'clock and four at nine o'clock because I want them thinking about Pamper Chef and me while they sleep, which probably sounds creepy, but similar. And he told me, Tina, that he sets his alarm. So okay. I'm not going to forget. He- so you get a reminder. Okay. Are you on direct ship? No, and I, I'm, I'm so glad I'm not. <laughs> it, it's, it, the direct ship changes a lot for virtual party people. And yeah. are you are you friend requesting all of these people that you're having these conversations with, or are you just talking to them through Messenger? Um, the Messenger piece really informs me as to whether or not I've been given permission to friend them. I think a lot of times we may, we we I think it's I say this a lot. It's a dance of appropriateness and um, comfort level on both ends. So like. I, if I have, I, I always ask permission to friend someone. I don't just friend them. And then as, do you actually have an actual call with the host or are you just, again, only talking to them through Messenger? All Messenger. Goodness. Okay. Now, I collect their information, of course, you know, their, te- their cell and all that stuff when they book so that if suddenly the messenger's like deleted from their phone and they go ghost on me, I have other methods. You know, I can text them and say, Hey, I messaged you. You haven't seen it. Your party's coming up. Like, are we confirmed, et cetera? And they might say, oh, you know, my phone, I'm getting, I'm in the middle of getting a, a new one, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, so you, you have other ways to catch up with them and try to confirm things or move, you know, everything forward. So. Okay. And then last, last question, because this is November and I could have sworn I heard you say you had 40 virtual parties this month, but are you, how are you going through Thanksgiving? Like, do you just not do anything that week or what do you do? No, so that's the thing about virtual parties. People can't give you the excuse that it's Thanksgiving because it's all on the computer. Okay, so what I told, so what I did was I run seven day parties, but for the, and I start them on Friday. So for the 16th, I'm only, I'm cutting my party down to be five days so that when I was pitching the idea of doing a party close to Thanksgiving, I was like, don't worry, it'll be done well before Thanksgiving. We'll be all wrapped up by then. So I, for the five day party, I got rid of Stoneware Day and I'm sprinkling somewhere pieces in all the other days, and then I got rid of one of the pre-party days. And then, because, you know, for December, basically November and the first two weeks in December, it's really like a six-week six month, because right. you lose the last two weeks. Well, I mean, I, I, still, I still work the last two weeks, and you should too. But a lot of consultants will say, oh, I can't work the last two weeks because the shipping day is cut off at the 17th. But my parties that start on the November 30th, the 5th and the 10th are all five days so that I can front load all of my parties so I can have the same robust show schedule as I would in November for December. Okay, good. Thank you so yeah. much. This is so awesome. Thank you. Sure. So said that he starts his parties on Fridays, as you hear, heard here tonight. It doesn't matter what day you start them on. He's consistent and they all start on a Friday. If you're comfortable starting them on a Monday, that's fine. You just pick one day and you start them all together so you're not all over the map. So I don't want you to get upset. Well, I thought I was supposed to start them on Mondays. There's no right or wrong as long as you're consistent across the board. Anyone else have a question for Steve? I do. Go, Gina. Okay. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for this great call, by the way. Sure. I do have a question. So you're typically doing 10 shows a week then, correct? And now you just said that you post manually. Doesn't that take a lot of time? Because I used to do manually, okay? And I kind of feel like what you said, like I felt like the sales were higher when I was posting manually, but then it got to be too much. So then I went to post my party in groups only because I had to but I felt like it was taking way too much time. How are you doing 10 parties a week posting manually? 
Yeah, so here's what I did. I created albums on my phone with all of my photos and I labeled them for each day of the party. So one one is photo pre-party day one, photo pre-party day two, photo or whatever. You just label the folders, right? And then I sent myself emails with that were labeled the same way, pre-party day one, pre-party day two, party day one. And the language for every post is in each of those emails and it's, it's broken off by a divider. So all I do, copy it, click the Facebook Messenger, or the Facebook app. It's so much faster when you use the Facebook app and not an internet browser, and then you log into Facebook. I go into the Facebook app, I click into the group section, open the group, copy, upload the photo, back out, go to the next one, do the same thing, back out, next one, back out, next one. It's very easy. It takes me like six minutes, four times a day. Really? It's really fast. I mean, it's really, really, really easy to do when you have them organized in albums and you have the language right there in an organized way in your emails. And why do you think the reason is that the parties are more successful when you manually post as opposed to post my party? Because I can't figure that out, but I feel like there is a difference. Yeah, I agree. I, and again, I study my numbers, right? So when I was, when I, so I tried doing groups with, you know, and, and, I, and I compared my sales when I was doing it and then when I wasn't, and, I, and it was like, it was quite lower than, than uh, manually. And I think it is a matter of mindset. I think that I personally am more intentional about res like responding in the right thoughtful way to things when I'm getting a notification in real time about things and whether I choose to answer it or not, that, that is what it is. But I, I just think there's a, there's a mindset about it that there's a greater urgency to provide customer service when it's connected to the manual way. Okay. I mean, again, I don't have the answers. I just, for that, I just, that's what I found. And, you know, I, now I'm, I may do this month. This is my first month of having 40 parties, right? So I may find like, oh, nope, can't do that. Got to go to the posting, you know, you know, and again, I'm trying it out and seeing how, how it works. But, you know, for now, it's fine. Listen, if mail can still admit it's a mental institution on December 1st, we know that it didn't work for him with 40 parties. We'll know. Who else has a question for the amazing Steven? Don't be shy. We're good? Okay, I just have to say this call was incredible. You are such a master at what you do. You can just tell you're so methodical. Everything you say and do has a reason, a purpose. Steve, I cannot thank you enough and congratulations on all your success and we're all cheering for you to promote to senior executive. There's no doubt in my mind that you will do that. You are an example for all of us to follow. Thank you so, so much for sharing with us. That's so nice. Thanks. Uh, this is, was a pleasure. So thanks guys. And I will post his entire um, document that he shared with me. So I know some of you had some issues hearing. You'll have it all. He typed it up to the best. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a